So yeah, I'm not gonna literally make you watch paint dry. However, we did two days ago get the entire shed, well, stained, I, guess, I don't know what you call it. We treated it with linseed oil and it looks nicer, darker, richer. It took a gallon and a half of linseed oil to cover all of this. Anyway, it's done. We took, it was a whole day process. My mom was even here and she did some of it. So I wasn't sure whether to do the roof first or the corral first, but Bill came over yesterday and took off some of this hillside here a little bit more so I can take the uh, corral straight out that way. And then across, it's gonna go 16 feet out and it'll be 20 feet across. Today, I gotta get the holes dug and the posts cut and then in to the concrete so that tomorrow uh, I can put the cross rails on and uh, hopefully finish it up. We do actually have an official delivery date uh, for Daisy. That will be a week from this Thursday. So today's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So 11 days, I'm not sure the actual date, but a week from Thursday. So this is coming out on Tuesday. So it'll be nine days from now. So time's a waste and I'm gonna get to work. All right, so I'm just taking a little break or finishing taking a little break. And um, I've got one, two, three, four, five posts out of seven installed. Take a look. One, two, three, four, five. So there's gonna be one more here, one more here. A lot of you expressed concern about the little cliff here, whatever you wanna call that. Um, yeah, we're going to figure out something to do with it. It's going to be retaining wall, shotcrete, something will be done. Uh, it is pretty good clay. There's a pretty good amount of clay in there. So, and, and possibly roots. So I'm thinking it's not just going to collapse. It will might slough off over, you know, the, the winter or months and years, whatever. But yes, we will be taking care of that somehow. Back to work and get these two posts in. And then I'll let you know how this is laid out and what it's going to look like tomorrow when I start putting the rails on. All right, guys, so I wanted to show you last night what I did yesterday, but as soon as I was all cleaned up and ready to start shooting, Noah's friends came over and they were down here at the basketball court, so I had to wait. But as you can see, the posts for the corral are all in. I just now got home with the wood for the rails. Hey, Bella. Hey, baby. Need that face. You know, you're getting a new friend here in a week and a half. Oh, I hope you guys get along. So there have been a few questions about uh, Daisy and her run-in with the dog where she's living now. Um, and if that, if we're worried that that will translate into being afraid of Bella. And of course, that's a fear. Um, however, the breeder said that they have other dogs that are around and she seems to be fine. So, you know, she's probably not gonna like Bella anyway for the first however long. She probably won't like us for a little while, but we have to slowly acclimate her, get her used to us. And I think that's just the same as us as it is for, for Bella. So I'm gonna be optimistic. And then there were some of you who asked about uh, letting her stay with the breeder longer to let the wounds heal. And if there's any type of um, you know, infection or lingering, anything that, that would be on her dime and not mine. Uh, from what we've heard, she's already healed. Cows have a remarkable healing quality. Uh, and the cat, the other calf that had a rip or a tear in her skin, um, she's actually already almost healed. So if she shows up next week, which will be over two weeks since the incident, but if she shows up and, you know, 
if she's not healed and there's anything that looks off, um, you know, we'll take care of that and we'll figure that out with the breeder. So I'm changed into my work clothes and I'm going to start cutting the wood for the rails, putting them up. As of right now, my, my plan is to have two rails, so maybe about a foot and a half off the ground and then about a foot and a half above that. Quite possibly we will put one along the top, but we'll wait and see how it works with just the two. There will most likely be three, but I've only got enough for two right now. Done with half of it. Okay, that was so easy. I mean, so easy and quick, I didn't even film it. Take a look. So yeah, I do believe we're going to have to put a third rung uh, right at the top because it just doesn't look tall enough. I mean, look, Bella's right at that height. So now I got to work on a gate for here and a gate for right here. And yeah, I still got to stain all that with linseed oil. Another day. Okay, it's getting dark and so it's time to clean up and go in. But look at the gate I made. I didn't film the process because it was a long, agonizing one, but it turned out almost perfect, which is good enough for me. So we've got this lock here that I might change because it does take two hands. Um, they have the kind that latches automatically, which is probably what I need. But come on, it's coming along. So we're gonna have another matching gate in this section. Um, I have to get more wood for that. And then we will have a rail going right at the top all the way around. And then I still gotta stain it. Anyway, I'll see you in the morning. So I just want you to see the next door neighbor's dog with those branches there is barking at me and Bella. Bella doesn't care. She's watching, making sure he doesn't come any closer, but she hasn't barked once. It's looking good this morning. I need to run to the hardware store and get more wood to finish it up. But first, I'm gonna plant my garlic. Okay, I was gonna do this segment a different way, but we've got a delivery happening to the nursery across the street, and we've got a roof being put on next door, so you can probably hear the background noise. So I'm gonna go ahead and plant, and then you'll hear a voiceover for what I wanted to say while I'm planting. Fall is the time for planting garlic. I live in a mild winter climate, so I plant it in November, even December sometimes. But no matter where you are, as long as the ground isn't frozen, you can plant your garlic. And it's totally okay if it comes up and you get a snow or freeze, it'll be fine. If you missed that window already, you can plant as soon as the ground starts to thaw. You want to choose the strongest, biggest cloves to plant, and that's what I'm doing here, just sorting them out, small and large. I'm going to take the small ones in and we can use those in the kitchen. Garlic love light, airy soil, they like consistent moisture, and they like full sun. You also need a good amount of phosphorus for root development. I'm also adding potassium to the soil because potassium help garlic absorb all the other nutrients it needs from the soil. That'll give you bigger, stronger bulbs to harvest. I'm just putting a mixture here in the ground of Neptune's Harvest Crab and Lobster and Kelp Meal. Now you want to space your garlic about four to six inches apart, about the width of your hand, and you want to plant them about two inches deep. The flat part down, the pointy part up. Now there's two types of garlic, hard neck and soft neck. I'm planting soft neck here. It's the best garlic for mild winters. Hard neck garlic is cool because it has scapes, which are the garlic buds, and they actually taste great and they look really cool in the garden. I'm actually planting hard neck garlic here for the first time ever. I've seen other people in my area do it successfully, so I'm gonna give it a try. The thing about hard neck garlic is it does need winter chill, and we don't have a lot of that here, so I have it in the refrigerator for about six to eight weeks. But if you live in hardiness zone three through eight, you can plant your hard neck garlic outdoors without refrigeration. I'm gonna mulch this to keep the weeds down and the moisture in. I'm using pine shavings, basically pet bedding, but you can use just about anything. All right, back to the noise for a second. Did you enjoy that? Did you enjoy it with just kind of the voiceover and the music? Because I did. It was much nicer to just get some different angles for you guys and just kind of work. We'll see how it works with the voiceover. 
So I got it planted and mulched. I've got two rows of soft neck garlic. I will probably plant two rows of the hard neck garlic right here along these two uh, drip tape. And that'll leave me one drip tape left. And I think what I'm gonna do is try the garlic that I grew last year um, so that I harvested in June. We still have some of it. If you guys remember, if you watch me on Next Level Gardening, um, we had kind of a, a crazy garlic harvest. Not in a good way. I still have some left that is actually sprouting, but if you take a look at how they formed, this is how I dug them out of the ground. My theory is that they got too much water because of all the rains and flooding we had last winter. So I'm gonna try a row of those to see if they're viable. I mean, they're viable, they're, they're producing, they're, they're sprouting, but will they produce nice uh, bulbs? And then I've still got about six weeks, six or seven weeks to wait to plant my hardneck garlic because it's gonna be in the fridge for that long. So job done. Now we're gonna head over to the hardware store, get the wood, and I'll catch up with you at the corral. We'll finish that up. Right, it's done all the way around. So exciting. A view from the front. Now for the front gate. Hopefully it turns out as good as the side gate. That's it. It's all done, except for the linseed oil, but that's another day. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. On the next video, among other things, we'll be finally putting the metal roof on. See you then.